that's one of that's one of the biggest threats to forests that exists out there right now is uh, the conversion of forests, whether it's uh, a forest with older trees or forest with younger trees, but conversion of that and an inability to, to replant the trees. One of the big events that happened was with railroads in the late 1800s. And one of the incentives for those railroads was that for every mile that you built, you got to claim some land. What that has led to is uh, an ownership pattern across Western Washington and across Eastern Washington uh, that oftentimes folks will refer to as a checkerboard pattern. As they built those railroads, they acquired those sections of land. And a lot of those were then consolidated, bought and sold, and, um, and even to this day are still owned by um, some of the timber companies that are, that are in the area. Those harvests were, you know, were obviously the first ones that were done. And so there was sort of this initial clearing of the, of the forests that were in Western Washington. Forests do a lot of really important stuff. A big one that folks are starting to spend a lot more time on now is carbon storage. And the ability of forests to suck carbon back out of the atmosphere, the importance of that forests play in the, in the carbon cycle um, and in keeping the, the climate stable and the air clean. So to the extent that we lose a lot of forests to other uses, then we take away the ability for them to, to do that, to help address climate change, to um, help clean the air. What we're doing is we're taking the wood from that pile that Sierra is carrying um, right here, four buckets, and we're moving it like by the trees so that the invasive species don't um, come in and take the nutrients that the trees need and that the trees can actually survive and grow and thrive, basically. What they do 
commonly in this area is what they call four to one for every four acres of forest that you protect you're allowed to develop one acre so that's one way that you're reducing the fingerprint quite a bit for development by protecting four acres from about one that you can develop in urban areas and good examples of that are like um, Issaquah Highlands where all of that uh, Grand Ridge so it's about 1500 acres came in for allowing development on the Issaquah Highlands. Um, uh, Black Diamond Open Space is another one that's coming in on the south where they put a lot of development in an area but they've also protected um, another 1,500 acres. So it's one way to reduce it. It doesn't eliminate it, but it helps to reduce it. There's also ways to do new development that don't have quite as much of an impact. There's uh, terms like low impact development that speak to the idea of less pavement and more gravel so that the water can soak back into the aquifers and there's ways to be sensitive about where you develop. So instead of going in a place that might be really tough on salmon, um, might be tough on other sensitive parts of the ecosystem, you identify some places where the impacts are minimized and decide to develop there. There's a lot of really important stuff that happens in our political system around this. So whether it's getting involved at you know, your city council level, whether it's getting involved at the state government or national government level, there's all sorts of decisions being made, whether it's policies that, um, you know, influence the ability to conserve or restore forests, um, or whether it's funding decisions getting made as to um, protecting forests or um, keeping working forests in business. Um, so those are important opportunities is just get involved in your, you know, your local governments and your, uh, your local decision makers. The things, they also have huge opportunities to put trees in the ground. So um, King County is in a big initiative to plant one million trees um, in five years. And so we, Parks has taken on putting in about um, 80,000 in the last two years, so we have volunteers come out and put trees in the ground. So, and for each tree that you put in, that's that much more carbon sequestered from the environment. So, you can volunteer anytime, any place, as well by putting trees in and work on your own backyard as well. There are choices that are being made right now uh, about uh, the future of these forests um, and. I'm involved in, you know, you can see the state capitol from here, I'm involved in the policy aspects and those types of decisions. So I think the more that uh, folks understand that every year there are decisions that are being made that influence forests in some way, then the more likely they are to be interested and feel empowered to participate in those in some way.